with me now, I work in Pension Secretary Therese Coffey, who is backing Liz Truss in the leadership competition. Talk about that in just a second. Just want to talk, though, about the urgent question yesterday after Prime Minister's questions. Our ambulance service is on high alert. There was an urgent question from Labour. Uh, there was no Secretary of State available to answer that. Are we running a zombie government at the moment? Well, actually, within uh, just tackling the issue of ambulances first, I get that as a constituency MP. I've been working on this actually for a decade and uh, seeing how the different organisations and strategies about how we're trying to improve elements for patients. It's our local NHS that runs uh, this, uh, the NHS east, east of England. But across the country, I know that there's been particular pressure with handoffs uh, to, from uh, ambulances into hospitals. And it's those sorts of elements where we really need the Ambulance Trust to get a grip working with the hospitals so we can get ambulances back out on the road for patients. But nevertheless, uh, I appreciate uh, there was an urgent question yesterday. It's actually Westminster practice that normally it isn't the Secretary of State that responds to uh, urgent questions, but other, other ministers. Uh, but importantly, it's um, um, here today as well because I've stayed in post in order to make sure that we can get out the cost of living payment today, which we are doing, and over 1.6 million households will be receiving £326 in their bank account today to help them with the cost of living. But if there's a COBRA meeting, I'm guessing that the government thinks that there is a big issue. So you would have thought the uh, Health Secretary could take time out of his busy schedule to talk to the public via TV cameras. Well, I, I don't know the arrangement for the Department of Health. I know I'm responsible for you the Department of Health. You accept it's a problem, a big problem. I, I don't know because I don't know what happened yesterday. Well, what all I do of the know ambulance services MP. are on high alert, so... Well, I understand that, and as I've explained, as a constituency MP, uh, my own ambulance trust has uh, been rated inadequate. Uh, I'm pleased to see that locally they finally listened to MP feedback, and in my They're own... They're not responsible for the weather. In my own ambulance trust... Uh, I'm very conscious of uh, the need to uh, operate at a slightly lower, and we're doing that by county. But I think it's because of the impact of high weather, uh, sorry, very hot weather, that the risk to people, particularly elderly, has gone up. And therefore, it's appropriate that we do take uh, substantial action to make sure that ambulance trusts are on high alert and prioritise appropriately. So what are you doing as a government? Well, as a government, uh, I'm just conscious that I am... Uh, as we've said, we're trying to make sure ambulance trusts are on high alert and prioritising, but also the, um, the hospitals to be able to unload patients, uh, to take them into their care as quickly I mean, as we're possible. we're talking at cross purposes. High alert that. means something different to you, to what it means to the ambulance service. When they're on high alert, that means that they're in trouble. Well, as I've pointed out, one of the challenges that we've been seeing with waiting times uh, for, for patients to get an ambulance has risen significantly. That's my understanding why uh, ministers have been stepping in to try and get that prioritisation, but also with the hot weather, we know that's a bigger risk, particularly for elderly. So it is about making sure the NHS, whether for the patients, is working uh, at full, uh, sorry, full rate to make sure that they can try and help patients. But as I say, I'm the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions. I know that my officials have been working relentlessly since we had the announcement of the extra support for over 8 million households. And I'm really pleased that those payments are landing today. Okay. And I'm anticipating all the payments that we will be making will be done by the end of uh, July. OK. Um, why are you supporting, supporting Liz Truss? She's got a lot of work to do, hasn't she? Liz Truss is a credible uh, cabinet minister with extended service in a variety of departments. Uh, most recently, of course, being Foreign Secretary, and I think she's worked exceptionally well in representing our country around the world, but particularly on Ukraine. Uh, she's the lady that finally, she was the one that got Nazanin back, did the negotiations, but also her work on trade deals shows that she can do those negotiations around the world. I think that uh, clearly she has going to be saying in a speech later today some more of her plans, uh, but I've always been impressed by her ever since I've got into Parliament, and I think that she is also known for getting a grip, focusing on delivery, and uh, I also believe that is one of the most critical things that we will be doing in the next two years, uh, up until the next election. Okay. I think Liz is the one. OK, so what would you say to the supporters of um, Kemi, Badenoch and Swala Braverman, because you are going to need those votes and more in order for it to get over the line. Why should they come to you rather than stay with those candidates? Well, um... Kay, I'm very conscious that this uh, leadership contest is very intensive and there's a lot of uh, personal emotions that people go through. They put their uh, allegiance to one candidate or another. And when their candidate doesn't do as well as perhaps they would like, it can take a little bit of time for that to absorb. The reason why I think uh, supporters of Suella and Kemi should come and join Liz is because uh, a lot of their 
uh, policies are in the very similar direction, about having a free economy, about making sure that we stand up for the United Kingdom, be proud of our country, uh, and indeed having that more focus on aspects of delivery, but a different approach slightly on how we uh, tackle economic issues. Including, um, she says that she's open to leaving the European Convention of Human Rights. Uh, Rhys Mogg, who's also supporting her, so even he wouldn't go that far. What do you think? Well, in terms of, um, one, undoubtedly, in terms of the ECHR, the European Convention on Human Rights, the, I, th I think it's fair to say most politicians believe there's been mission creep, I would suggest, and it would have been a surprise to the British public to hear uh, one morning that a European court had blocked, um, in effect, the, the plane going to Rwanda, recognising our latest immigration policy. Uh, but I think at a meeting the other night, uh, all the candidates I'm aware of that were um, uh, there, whether that was, I think it was Rishi, as it was reported on one of those uh, um, uh, blogs called Playbook, uh, they all indicated that uh, they would rather get reform, and that is Liz's position, uh, in order to reform no, the ECHR, no, that's not what she said. and also to do the Bill of Rights. And others did say uh, that uh, if, ne if, if necessary, uh, they would be up for uh, for that as well. I think that's you ducking my question, so I'm going to come back to it. Do you think that we should leave the European Convention of Human Rights? I think we need to reform uh, where we that's are. And that's different. what we're doing. Well, that's we're doing different. that with the Bill of Rights. And yeah, but indeed, should we leave the European Convention? Well, Theresa May said uh, what during What do the, you think? Uh, Theresa May said during the EU referendum uh, that she would rather leave the ECHR than leave the European Union. So I think it indicates this is a broad view across a lot of people. I'm not asking people. Theresa May, I'm asking you. Well, I'm not the person running for leadership. I'm no, here. but you have a view. Theresa Mogg's not running for leadership, but he has a view. I mean, Kay. some would say he's Kay. slightly right of Attila the Hun, but he still wouldn't leave the European Court of Human uh, Convention. Okay, what I am in favour of is about reforming of the U European I'm not sure why you won't Court of the Human Rights. Uh, and because I am uh, here to uh, represent the government in terms of our cost of living, um, at the moment, you're asking me questions about the views of a variety of leadership candidates oh. and my view. But I'm... I'm, I'm you're here. entitled to have your own view. OK, I've said very clearly, it's important that we get the reform and avoid the mission creep, and that's what we will be doing through the Bill of Rights. It's a bit like uh, next week, uh, recognising the uh, different legislation that we have. We're prioritising the Northern Ireland Protocol. And the reason why that is, is because we want to make sure that we have the appropriate uh, powers to make changes if necessary. So governments will act, act in different ways to make sure that they have the, the levers they need to uh, deploy as appropriate uh, in the future in terms of negotiations with other... Well, I'll just share with my viewers and we'll move on. Only Russia and Belarus are, are not members of the... Euro or uh, yeah, not members of the European Convention on Human Rights. We'll, we'll park that there. They can make up their own minds. Um, talk to me about suggestions of dirty tricks. Nadine Doris says there are dirty tricks and uh, Rishi uh, Sunak, the former Chancellor, is lending votes left, right and centre to keep your candidate out. My main focus is on getting Liz Truss into the final two of the MPs. That's uh, my and job. And she needs the votes, yeah. And that's what I will continue to do. I'm not going to get into other campaigns. OK, but... So Nadine Doris misspoke. Uh, I, d I don't know. I'm not saying Nadine misspoke at all. All I'm saying is I'm focused on Liz Truss and that's what matters to me, getting her in the final two. OK. Uh, what do you think about Rishi Sunak being a socialist? In terms of um, I'm conscious that other people will have come to their own conclusions. Uh, I've been working with Rishi. Clearly, there are some slightly different uh, views on what we should have done, on ver where various levies and similar. Uh, and, but with collective agreement and government, uh, of course, people will... Uh, have been voting for that in the past, but nevertheless, this is now a leadership contest and Liz will be setting out her views in her speech later. Okay. How surprised are you that Penny Morden's doing as well as she is? I think we've got a great range of talent in our Conservative Party and in our Conservative government. And you know, I know that Penny is an assiduous person, uh, but I am supporting Liz Trust because I think Liz has the full package in terms of experience, grippiness in terms of delivery, and that's why I'll be supporting her. Um, it's fascinating that she... Um, is apparently more Brexiteering than Nadine Doris and uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg together. They made that comment, didn't they, when they were outside Number 10 Downing Street the other day. And I'm sure she voted Remain. Well, I think, um, uh, I think she did vote Remain. However... I thought so. The point is that we're Democrats. And in terms of once a decision had been made by the British people, uh, that's respected. And I think you have to judge people by how they have responded since the referendum. Liz certainly has been out there uh, selling the UK around the world for both exports 
and inward investment, she really has been delivering on making the benefits of Brexit come to life more perhaps than any other cabinet minister that I've seen. Yeah, but she was on her way to Indonesia to do that as well, wasn't she? But uh, she soon got back on the plane as soon as she heard that uh, Boris Johnson had resigned. How long do you think she's been um, quietly planning to be prime minister? Um, I know uh, that uh, Liz has been absolutely focused on her job and has been in terms of supporting the Prime Minister because it was important to continue the stability government. It was right that Liz went to Bali to the G20. She didn't turn any plane around. She went there to do what she needed to do, including making sure that she signed the agreement so that Sweden and Finland could have the fast-track scheme to join NATO. Never, this mechanism has never been deployed before. That's how important, making sure that the interests of the United Kingdom in a global Britain... That in a trip? I thought that had already been done before she went to Indonesia. No, there was, this was an important part of her trip in G20 was to make sure that those agreements were absolutely signed. So this is why Liz will always put country first rather than, that, rather than politics and the best interests of our nation. And I'm pleased that she did that. I know there'll be other people thinking, why didn't she just turn the plane around and come back? She didn't. She did what was necessary in order to be the excellent foreign secretary she's been. And that shows the kind of leadership that she will, I believe, lead our country into. Just before I let you go, um, she's been described as a 21st century uh, Margaret Thatcher. Now, that is very appealing to the grassroots of the Conservative Party, perhaps less so to uh, the wider public. And she will have to face an election within two years or two years at the very uh, farthest distance. Um, how appealing will that be to the wider public? Liz Truss is my friend. Liz Truss is Liz Truss. She doesn't need to be a, a copycat of anybody else. She is her own person. You know, a lady that went to school in Paisley in Scotland, uh, then, then on to a, a comprehensive in Leeds. You know, she's a lady who has really shown that with hard work, real focus and her experiences in schools, is why she's so passionate about improving education standards and wants to make sure that the four corners of the United Kingdom stay as the United Kingdom, but also that we all lift in terms of prosperity. So I'm absolutely committed, and I'm absolutely convinced that she will continue to be able to deliver the mission of levelling up while also making sure uh, that we get a grip of all the issues that we're facing right now and lead us into victory in the next general election. So it's not helpful to compare her to Margaret Thatcher then? I would say that she is Liz Truss. Other people can make their judgments, but I think she's a fantastic lady and I think she should be the next Prime Minister. We'll see very soon, won't we? It's great to talk to you. Thanks so much indeed for joining us. Thank you.